the distributive property. And that's going to help you simplify a lot of things with these letters and stuff that you're dealing with to get it down as simple as you can get it. Um, stuff like, uh, if I have, I have two numbers here, x plus y. I don't know what the numbers are, so they're variables. And I have it five times. See what this really looks like. There's one of them, two of them, three, four, five. How many x's do I have? Five x's. And I have five y's that I can put together. And you see what happens is this five kind of jumps in here and jumps in there. And it gets distributed. It's kind of like this 5 is being handed out to everything in the parentheses. And so that's why it is called the distributive property. It's going to come in really handy. Let's try another one. 8, 3x plus 10. The 8 is going to come in here. It's 8 times 3. And 8 times 10 is 80. And now we'll go a little bit deeper into how to use these properties that we've learned to simplify algebraic expressions and then see some examples. We have two kinds of problems in all of algebra. Um, there are solve problems and there are simplify problems. Do you know how we differentiate these two kinds of problems in algebra? It's actually the anatomy of the problem. There is a piece that we see in every math problem that reveals to us if we are dealing with a solved problem or a simplified problem. It is the equal sign. Solved problems have equal signs, and simplified problems don't. Let's take a very simplistic example. What is the answer to 3x equals 15? Everybody says 5, absolutely, because you know your times tables. And we're going to learn how to do this in algebra. We divide this side by 3 and divide this side by 3. We aren't there yet, but pretty simplistic indeed. What we can do in our heads, 3 times 5 makes 15, we can do with algebra x equals 5. And we literally find out what the variable equals. This is what constitutes a solved problem. We know what the variable equals. Let's take, in contrast, a problem like this. Is there an equal sign there? There is not. What is the answer to 2x plus 3x? 5x's. But students often say, but, but Brother Rich, what is x? They just got to, got to, got to know what x is. We must understand before we embark on this journey in algebra that we have to consistently look to see, do I have an equal sign or don't I? What is my objective? Am I trying to find out what the variable equals or am I just trying to clean up the problem? Simplify problems are like clean your bedroom problems. We don't know what the variable equals, and we don't care what the variable equals. So if you have dirty clothes on the floor in your room, you pick them up, you put them in the dirty clothes basket. If you have books lying around, you put them on the bookshelf. If you have garbage, you throw it in the waste bin. A simplified problem just cleans things up and reorganizes the problem to put it in a more simplistic state. This is a powerful principle. If you understand this, algebra is going to work better for you. The question here is, do I have an equal sign? The answer, no, you do not. So is this a solved problem or a simplified problem? It is indeed a simplified problem. Why? Because it doesn't have an equal sign. Let's pan over and look at each one of these. Does this have an equal sign? It does not. Does this have an equal sign? It does not. What are the two tools of simplified problems? 
simplify problems, if you look at all of those, there are problems that have all numbers, and there are problems that have numbers and letters. What do we call those letters? Variables. That's right, variables. Problems with all numbers, the tool used to simplify those is the order of operations. And you know these tools. You've used them before. And the order of operations obviously begins with parentheses as exponents. We learn to multiply, divide, and add and subtract. And again, you've learned this concept, so it's just a quick summation of those four steps. But problems that incorporate not only numbers, but numbers and variables, or numbers and letters, these two tools are what we call distribute parentheses and combine LT. LT stands for like terms. And you've learned these two concepts in your previous homework assignments, particularly prior to, to learning today's lesson. Distribute parentheses, combine like terms. Now let's notice that the first step in both of these is parentheses. And parentheses come in three kinds. We have rounded parentheses, we have square brackets, and then we have the illustrious but difficult for Brother Rich to draw squiggly brackets. I did okay on that one. I seem to struggle with these all the time. So, squiggly brackets. And they come in this order. So we do these first, these second, these third. Some people call this innermost first, meaning that they come in layers like this. So we have rounded, then square, then squiggly brackets. Okay. Squiggly, very technical term there. Um, so let's take a look at each of these problems. So I'm going to ask you some questions and have you guide me. First one, first problem right here. Solve or simplify. Again, simplify. Why? No equal sign. What tool will we use here? Do we have all numbers or do we have numbers and letters? That's right, numbers and letters. So the tool we're going to use is distribute parentheses and combine like terms. Now what is our distributor in this problem? Let's look at this. What is in front of this parentheses? Correct, there is a 1 in front of that parentheses. So we could, we could state that there is really a negative 1 there. We could place that there. And so the distributor is this negative 1. And the negative 1 has to go to each term in the parentheses. So we're going to have 3a plus 2a. They drop down. And the negative 1 is distributed. Negative 1 times 4a makes, correct, negative 4a. And negative 1 times 7 makes, very good, negative 7. So we have distributed parentheses. Do we have any more parentheses? We do not. That's great. So we have taken care of our first step. Next step, we need to combine like terms. And again, we've learned these principles, how to combine like terms, how to distribute parentheses. And we like to use the symbol method. And so let's go ahead and organize. We have how many terms? And we've learned such an important topic here. And I want to remind you of this topic, that terms, terms are separated by plus and minus signs. So how many terms do we have up here right now? One, two, three, four terms separated by these plus and minus signs here. And this term is a 3a. Do we have another a term? We do. 2a. And another a term, negative 4a. And those are all of our like terms. 3a and 2a make 5a. 5a minus 4a makes a single a minus 7. Now, the hardest question to answer in all of our work, both in math and in life and anything we do, is the question, am I done? Such a hard question to answer, especially if we're not confident in our skills. 
So how can we know if we're done with this problem? First of all, what does A equal? We don't care. That's right. We don't care because we're not solving for A. This is not a solve problem. Okay? Next question. If Do I have numbers and letters? I did. I had numbers and letters to begin with. So here are my tools. The tools tell us if we're done or not. Do we have any more parentheses? We do not. So we've taken care of all that. Do we have any more like terms? We do not. We have variables. We have a number here. We don't have any more like terms. And so we can definitively, definitively declare, I am done. Powerful words. Okay. Okay. Our next problem up here. Again, let's, let's look at this. If uh, there are students all over the world doing algebra problems right now like this, they're looking at this with fear and trepidation. They're like, whoa, there's a lot going on right here. That's super involved. I don't want any of you to be afraid when you see this because you are equipped. You have the tools to do these problems. No equal sign. And so our two tools back here remind us, do we have all numbers or numbers and letters? That's right, we have numbers and letters in this problem. We have variables, we have numbers. And so is our tool the order of operations? No, it's not the order of operations. That's what we use when we have all numbers. Our tool here is distribute parentheses and combine like terms. But we have layers of parentheses this time. And so we've got to eliminate one layer at a time. First set of parentheses. Let's go ahead. Our rounded parentheses are right here and right here. And what is the distributor of this parentheses? Indeed, it is the 6. It must go to here and to here. And here, our distributor is the 5. It must go to here and to here. So let's do this first one. Everything else that we aren't currently working with must come down into the next step. So the square bracket comes down. 6 times x, very good, 6x. Six, 6 times 4, very good, 24. Uh, the minus and the 12 come down. What happened to our rounded parentheses? We distributed them. We eliminated them with this distributor, so they no longer exist. Then we have minus. Do we need to distribute that minus through everything right now? Not yet, because it's outside of the square bracket. We must first take care of our rounded parentheses. The distributor is the 5. 5 times x, indeed, 5x. Five, 5 times negative 8, very good, negative 40, plus 14, square bracket. We've taken care of our rounded parentheses first, okay? And we've taken care of the distributors of those two parentheses. All right, now, should we keep working on parentheses? We must first combine like terms in this parenthetic world. What does this mean? It means we distributed this. Let's go ahead and address the like terms inside of this parenthesis. So it's a process. First, we distribute parentheses of the rounded type, and then we're going to combine like terms, and then we will begin distributing parentheses of the square type. So our like terms inside of this parenthetic world, do I have any other x terms? I do not. I do have these two numerical terms, 24 and negative 12. What do they make when combined? Very good, they make a 12. And so we're going to have square bracket 6x plus 12 square bracket minus square bracket. Come over here. What like terms do I have over here? Very good, I don't have any other x terms. I just have negative 4 and 14 is what you're telling me. So I have 5x minus 26. Those two terms combined make negative 26. Okay, now I have distributed my first set of parentheses. I've combined my like terms within those parenthetic worlds. Now I look at what's my distributor for this parentheses. What is the distributor there? There's nothing written there. So when there's nothing there, what is there? Very good. It's a 1. So there's, there's a silent or a hidden 1 there. 1 times anything is itself. So we're going to put a 1 here. And because 1 times anything is itself, do we need this parentheses any longer. We don't. This is just 6x plus 12, and we got rid of that parentheses because the distributor was simply a 1. What's the distributor of this parentheses? Very good. Negative 1. So there still is a 1 there, but now I have a negative in front of it, and this we do need to distribute. We can't just get rid of the parentheses. This has to come to here and to here. 
and so we end up with negative 5x, and a negative and a negative make a positive 26. May I just remind you that when we, the number one mistake students make in problems like this is they'll bring that negative to this first term, they'll often forget to bring it to the second term. Don't forget to do that. Do I have any more parentheses left? I don't. That's awesome. So we've taken care of rounded parentheses, then squared parentheses, but I do have like terms. So looking up here, I have a 6x term. Do I have an x here? I do not. Do I have one here? I do. So I'm going to circle that. Do I have one here? I don't. 6x and minus 5x makes 1x. We just call that x. Uh, here I have a numerical term and another numerical term. I have 12 and 26. When I combine those, 12 and 26 make plus 38. And then again, the magic question, am I done? Um, first of all, do I know what x is? I do not. Do I care? I don't care. Why? It's not a solved problem. It was a simplified problem. I've cleaned this up. Look how complex this was up here. When we began, we were nervous, and we've brought it all the way to this. This looks, looks a lot cleaner. We've cleaned this problem up. Do I have any more parentheses? I do not. Do I have any more like terms? I do not. I am done. Very good. All right, next problem. Again, I ask this question to you all the time. Do you have an equal sign? You don't. Very good. So solve or simplify? Simplify. Excellent. So we're just going to clean this problem up. Next question. All numbers or numbers and letters? Look at it closely. Very good. All numbers. So let's come back over here. So our tools when we have all numbers is the order of operations. Here our tool is distribute parentheses combined like terms when I have numbers and letters. We've done that on two problems, but right now I just have all numbers, so I am going back to the order of operations. So let's come over to our problem. Our first step in the order of operations, we're reminded, is parentheses. So big question here. Am I going to distribute that negative to this parentheses? I am not. This isn't a numbers and letters problem. I'm not worried about distributing right now. I'm worried about taking care of the math inside of the parentheses. So first focus is going to be, let's grab our red pen. Our first focus is going to be everything in this parentheses. So everything else, the 5 to the 3rd, the plus, the 26, the times, the 71, the minus, they all drop down. And then I must obey the order of operations within the parenthetic world. So what comes first? I have 16 plus 25 times 3. Okay. So we don't have any more parentheses within the parentheses. I don't have any exponents, but I do have multiplication and division, and that comes before addition and subtraction. So 25 times 3 makes 75, and this is going to then be 16 plus 75. Now, 16 plus 75, I'm going to add those, the 5 to the 3rd, the plus, the 26, the times, the 71, the minus, they all drop down. 16 and 75 make 91. Very good. You guys are mathematicians, not just mathematicians, knowing that 16 plus 75 makes 91, that's good. Okay, what happened to the parentheses? It's gone. We've taken care of it. Okay, now I must continue to... Uh, Follow the order of operations. I've got uh, exponents next. 5 to the third. 5 to the third. Is that 15? 5 times 3 is 15? Absolutely not, right? We don't treat big numbers and little numbers the same. 5, five times 3 equals 15, but this is 5 to the third. And 5 to the third with our exponents, we remember this, is 5 times 5 times 5, okay? 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. Plus 26 times 71 minus 91. They all drop down. And again, we've got to follow the order of operations. So now we've got 125 plus 26 times 71 minus 91. The remaining steps in our order of operations, just a reminder, okay? We have taken care of parentheses, we've taken care of exponents. Our next step is to look at multiplication and division as it reads from left to right. We do have a multiplication problem here, 26 times 71. 
And while I might be a math genius, <laughs> just kidding, I don't know 26 times 71. So can somebody help me with that? 1846, very good, 1,846. I hope you did that on a calculator. If you did that in your head, I'm super impressed. 1846 minus 91. 125 plus 1846, let's do that one, okay? That is 19, 1971, because we are adding and subtracting from left to right right now. We're in the last step of the order of operations. So these two just combine to make 1971 minus 91. Okay, 1971 minus 91, okay? Those two numbers, they make 1880. All right, a little easier to ask the question, am I done? Okay, right now I just have one number left, so I am for sure complete with this problem. Um, was there a variable in this problem? There was not. So we're not solving for a variable. We're simplifying this numerical problem through the use of the order of operations. Our final answer, 1,880. Very good. Hello and welcome back to the boards. It's time for you to practice some simplifying expression questions. There are a two-step procedure when doing these types of problems. First of all, make sure to distribute into the parenthesis, if you have any. And then combine your like terms. So combine your x's with your x's, your y's with your y's, your z with your z's, your numbers with your numbers. Go ahead and pause the video now and try these four problems. When you're done, go ahead and unpause it and we'll work on them together. We'll see how you did. Okay, let's see how you did. Step number one is to distribute into the parenthesis. Well, here on question number one, we don't have any parenthesis, so we don't need to worry about that. Step number two, combine like terms. So let's combine my z's with my z's. Let's see, if I had four zebras plus seven zebras, that would be 11 zebras. And then we're gonna combine our numbers with our numbers. Numbers are like terms, so three plus one is four. That's our answer for number one. Number two. Step number one, distribute into the parenthesis. In number one, we don't have any parenthesis, so we don't need to worry about that. We just need to combine our like terms. So our four X's with our, ooh, negative seven X's. Okay, so if I had four X-rays minus seven X-rays, ooh, that would give us a negative number. That's gonna be negative three X. Then I'm gonna combine my XY's with my XY's. So negative three XY's plus eight XY's would give me five XY's. And that's our answer for number two. Number three, step number one in the procedures is to distribute into the parenthesis. So uh, let's distribute. I've got to multiply this four into all the values inside the parenthesis. So four times X, well, that would be four X. And then four times three would be 12. And then I have this minus two X plus one. Now that I've distributed into the parenthesis, I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms. Let's combine the X's with X's. 4X minus 2X. Ooh, that's going to be 2X. And plus 12 plus 1. 12 plus 1 is 13. And so that's my answer for number 3. Okay, last question. Number 4, it's got two sets of parentheses in it. Ooh. So uh, step number one is going to be to distribute into the parenthesis. I'm going to need to distribute this two into this parenthesis. So two times x, that's two x. And this two also will get multiplied to the seven, so I get 14. Again, we multiply the outside value into all the values inside the parenthesis. Now, the second set of parentheses is a little tricky. The value that we're going to multiply in is a negative 3. We've got to take this negative 3 and multiply it into both the values. So you do take the sign. So negative 3 times 2x is minus 6x. And negative 3 times negative 5 is plus 15. Now, let's not forget this 3x at the very beginning of the problem. Okay, great. Now that we've distributed it into the parenthesis, we're going to go ahead and combine like terms. I've got 3x plus 2x minus 6x. So 3x plus 2x, that's 5x. 5x minus 6x, ooh, that's a negative x. And then 14 
plus 15 is 29. So that's our final answer on number four. Thanks for working with me at the boards. Keep working hard.